welcome back to my channel and welcome if you are new here. Thank you so much for clicking on today's video. Today we are going to talk about 11 proven scientifically backed ways to lose weight without exercise. Now, can you lose weight without going to the gym, without sweating, without exercise? Absolutely. And I'm going to share with you 11 proven ways to do just that. However, I want to encourage you to include some type of exercise or daily movement for 30 minutes or more a day into your weight loss regimen. You are going to feel better. Your body will be toning up throughout your weight loss and overall exercise, including strength training is so important for body function, the way your body looks and the way your body feels, your strength, your mobility, and your endurance. So although we can lose weight without exercise, I recommend including some type of intentional movement every single day. But if you're not quite there yet on your journey, maybe you're just starting, maybe you're not quite ready to incorporate exercise, let me share this 11 proven tips to lose weight without exercise. I need to take note of and that is to chew thoroughly and slow down when you're eating I am literally the fastest eater and I know that about myself and I try to mindfully slow down my eating but I'm still a fast eater I beat my husband every single night he often make com makes comments like holy moly I barely started my dinner and you're done so this tip definitely needs to be taken by myself your brain needs time to process that you've had enough food to eat. They say that once you even complete a meal, it takes your brain about 20 minutes to process that you're full and that you're satisfied. So by slowing down and chewing your food thoroughly, it's allowing your brain the time it needs to signal that you're full and that you're satisfied. And of course, eating your food more slowly, chewing thoroughly is going to make you eat less. You're going to feel full and satisfied while consuming less points and calories. And in fact, a study has shown that people who eat faster are more likely to gain weight than people who eat slower. And that's because the slower eaters feel full and they consume less points and calories than those of us that are fast eaters. So some tips on how to chew thoroughly and to slow down your eating count how many times you are chewing each bite. You can even put your fork or your eating utensil down between bites. That way it takes you time to pick that up, get some additional food on there and bring it to your mouth. So those are a couple of tips on how to chew thoroughly and slow down. Noted. Number two is use smaller plates for unhealthy foods. In fact, use smaller plates for most of your meals. It plays a trick on our mind to see a full plate of food, one that is up to the gills with food. And if we're using a really large dinner plate, mindful portions won't fill that plate. So if you go to a smaller plate, like a salad plate or a dessert plate, especially for unhealthy foods, but for healthy foods as well, it's going to trick your mind into thinking that you're getting a little more food bang for your buck. Now I will say that if you are going to have a big old salad, put it on a big old plate because that is a healthy, low calorie food. Salads are really good for you. So on the flip side, if you're eating a really healthy meal that is low in calories and points, put it on a big plate. But everything else, put it on a smaller plate so that your eye tricks you and that you feel immediately like you're getting a lot of food for those points and those calories. Number three is extremely close to my heart and that is eat a lot of protein. Protein is the number one macronutrient that keeps you full and satisfied. One study shows that by increasing your protein between 15% and 30%. So basically 15 to 30% of your daily calories should be from protein. Show that people ate on average 441 less calories in a given day when they focus 15 to 30% of their calories on protein. They also lost about on average 11 pounds in a 12 week period. So not only did it keep them full and satisfied, it caused them to eat 441 calories less, putting them in a calorie deficit, thus losing about 11 pounds over a 12 week period. Add protein to every meal, breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snacks. Make sure that you are pairing 
a carbohydrate, a healthy fat, a sweet treat with some type of protein. Set yourself a protein goal. You guys know that I use Jordan Syatt's approach. Right now I am doing my goal weight times 0.7. I am going to link the video playlist down below for points versus calories where I talk all about Jordan Syatt and his approach to protein. What I track is my calories, my points, and my protein. Carbohydrates and fat, fiber, I get plenty of all of those that they're not on the forefront of my mind. I am very concerned about protein because protein keeps me full, satisfies, helps me lose weight, and again, is the most important macronutrient. Number four is store those trigger foods, those unhealthy foods out of sight. Better yet, don't even bring them in your house. If you store your favorite foods, your unhealthy foods at eye level, so on that shelf in your fridge that when you look in, it's the first thing you see, or the shelf in your pantry or your cupboard that when you open it up, it's right there in front of you, it's going to trigger cravings. You're going to reach for that, sometimes even when you're not hungry. So store those items out of sight if you even brought them into your house. Better yet, again, don't even bring them into your house. Number five is eat a fiber rich diet. There are so many benefits to fiber. Most importantly, fiber keeps you full. It is the one nutrient that keeps you full alongside protein. Also, fiber keeps you regular. And we all, let's be honest, we all wanna be regular. So studies show that viscous fiber, I'll put that here on the screen for you, is the type of fiber that is most beneficial with weight loss. Viscous fiber essentially forms a gel when it comes in contact with water so it does that in your stomach it forms a gel it's a little heavier in your stomach I don't want to say heavier but it's in your stomach and it's there and it triggers your stomach that you're full and satisfied viscous fiber is found in plant foods things like beans oat cereals Brussels sprouts oranges asparagus and flax seeds so those are some of the best sources for viscous fiber just make sure that overall you are eating enough fiber in a day a minimum for women of about 25 grams of fiber per day number six is drink your water we all know how important water is so if you're not going to get an exercise or you're not going to intentionally exercise make sure you're drinking enough water water flushes out our bodies and our organs but water also helps keep us full studies show that that by drinking half of a liter or 17 ounces of water about 30 minutes before a meal, you consume less food at that meal, less calories, less points. In fact, participants of this study who drank water 30 minutes before a meal lost on average 44% more weight over a 12 week study period because they were eating less at the meal because the water in their stomach kept them full. Number seven is serve yourself smaller portions or ask whoever serves you your meals to do smaller portions. If we put a lot of food on our plate, we're going to eat it. Sometimes even when we're full and satisfied, we'll continue to eat because it's there. It's on our plate. It's in front of us. Serve yourself a little bit less of your favorite foods. Make sure you're weighing and measuring as well. Use a food scale. It is the most accurate. You can measure in grams, fluid ounces, milliliters, pounds, use your food scale, weigh out your food. And in the event that you're still hungry after consuming all of what is on your plate, that smaller portion size, then go ahead and go back and get some more. Weigh it out on your food scale, track it, record it, account for it, but start with a smaller portion size and I bet you're full and satisfied, even though it looks so much smaller to you, by using that smaller plate in those smaller portion sizes, you're going to end up eating a little bit less or even a lot of it less. Number eight, eat without electronic distractions. Your phone, your computer, your tablet, your laptop, your TV. When we are on our phone or watching TV, we are not mindfully eating. We are focused on something else other than what we are eating. We can eat a lot mindlessly and not be full and satisfied where if we're really focused on intentionally enjoying and eating what's in front of us we are likely to be triggered to be full or satisfied a lot faster one study showed that people who eat distracted whether it's on a phone or a TV eat at least 10% more than those who eat undistracted. When we are eating distracted, we don't even know that we're overeating. So I encourage you, whenever you are eating a meal or even a snack, really sit down and enjoy it. Mindfully eat that, turn off the TV, the computer and the phone. It's not gonna kill you for just a little bit of time to really enjoy your food. And you should see benefits in your weight loss, 
your calorie and your point consumption by mindfully eating. Number nine is sleep well and do your best to avoid stress. Now I know this doesn't always happen. I know that life gets busy. We don't always get eight or nine hours of sleep every night. Life throws us curveballs. Look where we are right now, where we are a little bit overly stressed, a little more added stress than normal. These have a tremendous effect though on your appetite and your weight. So try, try to get your sleep and try to lower your levels of stress. We know that the hormone cortisol becomes increased when we are stressed and when we have lack of sleep. That cortisol makes us crave foods. That makes us snacky and hungry and we will reach for foods that we generally wouldn't reach for with enough sleep and less stress. Chips, candy, junk food. Also chronic sleep deprivation. If you are starving your body of sleep on a regular basis, it is proven to lead to type two di diabetes as well as obesity. So my friends try to get enough sleep, try to reduce your stress level. If that means just taking a moment to breathe deeply, it's important. It's important for weight loss and your overall health. Number 10 is eliminate sugary drinks. Try to eat your calories, not drink them. It is proven that sugar is the worst thing for our body. Sugary beverages such as sodas, juices, waters that have added sugar for flavor like vitamin water are one of the leading causes of diabetes. It's very easy to consume excess calories from sugary drinks because they don't make us full. They don't satisfy us. They don't curb our hunger. So it's very, very easy to overindulge. It's best to stay away from sugary drinks in general and focus on things such as water, coffee, unsweetened green tea, even unsweetened black tea. You can even flavor your water with lemons or limes or cucumbers or oranges. Just stay away from sugary beverages. Don't drink your calories, eat them. Number 11 is extremely interesting. It was something that literally I'd never heard of before and that is to serve unhealthy or what is deemed as unhealthy foods on a red plate. The color red is indicative of stopping. That is why stop signs are red. So when we're eating unhealthy foods on red plates, it triggers our mind to stop, to stop eating so much of these foods. They did a study where they had people eat pretzels off of a red plate and had participants eat pretzels off of a blue or a white plate. Those that ate the pretzels off of blue or white ate far more than those who ate it off of red. Now, do I know if this works? No, but it's worth a shot. Grab a few fun red plates and when you're eating something that is unhealthy or high in calories or points, try eating it off of a red plate and see if it triggers you to stop eating sooner than it would on a different color plate. So in summary, many very simple lifestyle habits or changes can help with your weight loss. You don't have to sweat for hours in the gym. You don't have to run a marathon. You can just change some of your basic daily lifestyle habits and you should see a benefit in your weight loss. You don't have to go into these tips and tricks guns ablazing. Try one or two of them, see how they work for you, and then move on to a couple of others. You don't have to do them all at once, just baby steps. Take baby steps into a healthier lifestyle. And I also want to remind you that it is still important to move your body. A body in motion stays in motion. A body at rest stays in rest. So even again, if you're not sweating it out in the gym or running a half marathon, do a little bit of intentional exercise every day. Get up and move your body for at least 30 minutes. It's so important to your overall health. But by making these very simple lifestyle or daily habitual changes, you're going to see a benefit in your weight loss. Again, you don't have to sweat you guys to lose weight. So that is what I have for you today. I hope that these 11 tips really, really help you out. I will go ahead and type these up down in the description box for you so that you have them at a glance. Also in the description box, you're going to find the links and discount codes to my favorite things and the link to head over and join my Facebook group. We would love to have you be part of that community over there. Head on over and join us. If you're new, make sure that you're subscribed and that your bell notification is turned on so you don't miss a single video. Give this one a big thumbs up if you enjoyed today's video. It really helps out my channel and means a lot to me. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. I hope that I am helping you with your healthy lifestyle journey and I'll see you all in my next video.